news internet. It's time to fly to Prince George, Canada. And there's our little uh, taxi bedeal, or whatever you want to call it. After this, we're going to be flying to is it North Dakota, then back to Minnesota. We're damn close. Damn close. Uh, if you saw the video that uploaded before this one, actually the one before this, <laughs> that was X-Plane 10. It's actually a pretty good game. It's the modern version of a flight sim. It's very pretty. It is also very hardcore. It does not hold your hand like this game does. Although it does allow you to program VOR to VOR very easily, which this one does not. I have, I do know that there are taxi things on the runway I've seen in YouTube videos, but I haven't figured out how to get that to work yet. I've been playing with it. But it does not hold your hand at all. It is a very hard, like, you have to know how to fly a plane and how all the crazy nerd stuff works in order to, you know, travel to make it work. And uh, once this is done, I'm probably going to do a round the world trip with Flight X Plane 10. That's what was up with that video. I'm going to use that Beechcraft. I need to learn its maximum, you know, distance that I could fly on a tank of fuel, which is about 1,280 nautical miles before it runs out of fuel. So I'm guessing a thousand nautical miles distance, and I should be fine. Uh, my rule for this plane is 1,200 nautical miles. So, if, yeah, it should work. I'm hoping. It's just that uh, I've gotten everything down, how to set the flight paths, how to do all this crazy, stupid shit. It's the taxiing instructions that are a little weird for me. I'm not 100% sure if I know how to do it. I'm going to have to work on that. We'll see what happens. Whoa! But until then, we're going to taxi out here and we're going to take off and head towards Canada. On a side note, you see how accurate these airports are? Uh, they don't look that realistic from the air because, yeah, we've got all this white around here while it wouldn't be that way. So airports in X-Plane 10 look more realistic, they're harder to find. But I've noticed the layouts aren't accurate. Always accurate, for some weird reason. In Flight Simulator 10, uh, the taxiways, everything, are, even Oatana, at least when the game came out, uh, it's, it's very accurate. Uh, my, my local airport, they got the runway down, at least the one, one way, what runway that was there when it came out is accurate, but the taxiways, the airport, it's, it's not realistic. And they don't have seasons, you know, there's snow everywhere, that it doesn't do that in X-Plane 10. It's a little weird. Uh, Flight Sim is really good at getting the layout of every real world airport accurate. X-Plane 10 doesn't. It's, it's good when you're in the air. Once you're once you're on the ground, it has the elevation changes and everything right. Like the runways aren't flat, which is something that's really cool. But the actual layouts, like they they, they got the taxiway on the wrong side of the runway in X Plane 10 for my local airport. It's like I really it's weird, you know. So that's a major bitch I've been seeing online. And there's not a lot of aftermarket support for airplanes like there is in Flight Simulator 10, but we're still going to do it anyway, so. Uh, I wish that we could merge the two, you know? The accuracy of this game with the prettiness of the other one, you know? But, eh. So be it. That is life. On to our taxi. Here we go. We need to take off. And I finally found out that the where it wants to pull to the left, that's not a glitch. That's just the way these aircraft work. I found that out finally. It's just that it doesn't show up in 
game until you're at full realism. I found that playing Exploit 10 and reading about some things. So yeah, this entire time, it's just been me not freaking uh, understanding how it works. I guess. <laughs> Here we go. We're heading for 10,000 feet. Turn the air traffic control off. We need to clear these mountains. So we need to kind of circle around. Yeah, we're not going to do flight following. Okay, we need to go over here. There we go. So if we fly towards those mountains, we're going to hit them. So we need to get the altitude up a little bit before we fly over there. But the direction I'm looking is the direction we want to go. We just want to get our altitude up a little bit. So right off we go. Ah, screw that radio. Well, what we're doing is we are going to fly through this little uh, valley through here to get some altitude. And then we're going to curve off to the left a little bit. I'm flying with uh, autopilot on the heading, so if I go to the left a little bit, let's see if we can turn left. We're going to snake our way through here, and then we're going to get up to altitude. Okay, now that we have enough altitude up, we're going to switch the autopilot from heading to nav. Right now. Watch it bank to the left. It's going to drift over to the left and follow the little purple line on my GPS. We're looking 900 and something nautical, 952 nautical miles, 7 hours. Just a little mid-flight update here. We've been flying over these crazy-ass mountains for a while now. It's actually really pretty. <laughs> the stuff you normally don't see, the stuff I've been editing out, you know. All these mountains, the lake there. Having to detour a little bit around, a couple of them that are over 10,000 feet. But, yeah, we're an hour and 51 minutes out, 281 nautical miles. Yeah, this is the scenery between Anchorage and Prince George, Canada. The whole freaking way. Okay, we're 10 minutes out, 30 miles. We're descending to 7,000. And probably going to drop a bit after that. Just wait for the damn airport to show up on the list, get into range, and fly in manual heading on autopilot this entire time. The uh, nav thing just isn't working right, but well, we're descending in uh, somewhat of a fog, and we'll make it work. Tower 1 and Mission 33 Bravo 3 Lima, 1 mile northwest to land. Room and Mission 33 Bravo 3 Lima, power. Okay, we cleared the land. Going by my uh, little thingy. It appears that it is to the left here. Wow, this is a big, uh, big city. Turn the car heat off. There it is. <laughs> to the left. Here we go. Not 100% sure how accurate the little uh, dealy majig <laughs> is on the thin majig. Can't think of it right now. The little white yellow line. 
seems to be lining up with the runway I'm supposed to land at. So this should be the runway. Okay. Yep. Just guessing. So we need to come in for a landing. Here we go. Ooh, pretty aquamarine lights and shit. <laughs> okay. X-Plane 10 series, I'll be less silly. Okay, here we go. Runway. Pull up. Come on. I'm a little bit tired. So I'm landing a little... Oh! There we go. We're down. Okay, we're at the end of the runway. Get a little spread dealy over there. Ah, come on. <laughs> there we go. And here we go. Taxi time to parking. Woo! Got the tower over there with the pretty lights. And all that fun stuff. You need to figure out how taxiing works in X Plane 10. That's the one thing I need to figure the fuck out. That's just not this easy. It doesn't hold your hands. So. But we're going to taxi over here to the parking spot. And there's the parking spot. Uh, 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 <laughs> not going to be perfectly straight. Control P or Control Dot. There we go. And Control S. Start shutting shit down. There we go. Well, and the flaps are still down. Hey, whatever. We are in Prince George, Canada. And I'll be looking up a uh, picture for it, which you should be seeing about now. But. Here we go, Prince George, Canada. That's a bright fucking light. I'm not sure what's up with that. Uh, <laughs> do a little circle, circle of my jig. But here we are. Next stop is Rapid City, North Dakota, which is K-R-A-P. I hear it's a crap airport. <laughs> but look at all those trees. Till then, see you guys on the flip side.